Okay guys, so I'm going to be talking about connecting two transformers together in uh, parallel today and how to basically phase those two transformers to get your maximum ampage but without losing your voltage because if you get your phasing reversed obviously it cancels each other out if they're matching transformers and you get practically nothing. So uh, I've got two uh, obit transformers here, I've actually got a third one over here which is the right way around to show you guys. So we've got a primary of 220 volts at 1.2 amps 50 hertz. Uh, 220 is a little bit low, but I've got a very to cope with that. But these things are built like tanks. They could probably run on 250 for quite a long time without getting too warm. But we'll be running them on about 230, 240 thereabouts. So uh, the secondary is 2 times 5 kV at 20 milliamps and a five, uh, 15 kV amplitude. So what that basically means is because it's a center tap, if, as we can see here, we got plus 5 kV and minus 5 key, uh, kV at any point in time. So the difference between the two will be actually 10 kV. So that's um, that's a center trap, uh, tap high voltage transformer. They're usually quite common in that configuration. So if you want to connect two of them in parallel, usually you connect up your uh, primaries in, in phase with each other. So you put your browns with your browns and your blues with your blues, and of course put your earths in together. And you basically put your outputs also the same. So you've got your left hand side one there would be the same phase as your left hand side one there and your right hand side one there would be the same phase as your right hand side one there so the difference between the two would be the same in voltage so if i put that one on top of there and say connect it up in this configuration then in most cases in most cases that configuration there would work and we've got a Jacob's ladder here, just as an example, as an example of a um, something you might want a bit more current for it because you want to get right to the top, say, and you don't want to make it narrow because it doesn't look quite as cool. And so you decide on paralleling up two high voltage transformers to get twice as many milliamps. You get instead of it being 20 milliamps, you get 40 milliamps, and keep the voltage the same. So um, what you usually do is connect it up like that, and that would work fine. But uh, the problem is some transformers actually have their phasing opposites and I know for a fact that this one here is actually opposite on the output so as you can see I've drawn a dot here on the right hand side and these two have a dot on the left hand side so this one here turns out to be opposite phasing so that's probably because either it's wired ever so slightly different in the inside or the winding is actually backwards or maybe what is blue and what is brown isn't actually inside. So they don't match those two basically. So not all transformers are the same. Even identical makes and models bought in the same day aren't. So that's just an example of why it's quite important sometimes just to measure these things. Usually if you connect that up and get the phasing wrong, you'd basically, they'd make a lot of humming and won't do very much. They'll just, they'll just um, cancel each other out. You get pretty much zero voltage, but quite a lot of amps thrown because they are fighting against each other. So what I'll do is um, I'll just take this off from here a second and just demonstrate to you guys how you can use an oscilloscope, a dual channel oscilloscope, and to actually measure your phasing. I've got a couple of Fluke ATK40 uh, high, volt, high voltage probes here because they these transformers happen to be high voltage, but obviously if it's a low voltage transformer, you can use, you can use your normal uh, oscilloscope setup. So if I just put these side by side, and I'll just demonstrate, just keep these out, out of the way, so I'm going to be powering this one up, but I don't want it being connected to anything, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay, so now if I put my one, one probe and put it on the one side of the output, and take the other probe and put it on the other side of the output, so now we know that basically we're going to be seeing either side of the, uh, the phase at the same time on the oscilloscope. So we'll turn this oscilloscope on. I'm running down on the wall. Let that warm up a second. And you should see both channels when it warms up. Just now. So if I just tweak those channels to bring into the what we're going to call the center tap ground line there, or your earth line. So we've got both channels now, both zeroed out at the earth point, which is in the center there. So when we turn this on, you should see basically. Say the left hand side one happens to go up first and it'll go down and through the ground and then it'll go the opposite way then because it's obviously sent to tap. And then the other side one, the right hand side one, 
will start off opposite, it'll go down, and it'll go back up through the through the center point, and then it'll carry on as normal. So if I demonstrate that first, I'll close up the safe box, turn the altmeter on, variac on, output on. Right, so I'm gonna take this up to about 200 volts, because I don't want this, the, um, I do not want the Jacobs ladder to start straight away. I just want to show you the actual phasing first. So hopefully it won't fire at about 200. So there we go, we've got 200 volts, so yep. Okay, obviously this is all on now. I've got that clamp down to stop from falling over for obviously re obvious reasons, because the footprint is actually quite small compared to the height. So safety first, guys. And uh, there you go, so you've got what basically looks like what um, is an eye on the oscilloscope, or what some people call a fish. So you've got your um, your first phase is going straight up, so this is the left-hand side one, and it's going down through the the negative point, well not negative, the F point, and then going into the negative cycle there. And then you've got your other one, which is say your right-hand side one, it's going through the negative cycle. At this point here is your peak to peak, so that would be, if it was at 220 volts, that would be your 15 kV peak to peak it was talking about on the actual transformer. So then it'll travel back up and it'll pass through the center point and then do the opposite. So they will be completely out of phase as they are now. So that is good. That is completely out of phase left to right, which makes sense. So what I'll do now, I'll just turn that off and I'll show you what the other transformer looks like. Right. Okay, click open the safe block. So now in normal case scenarios, we know that the right hand side is in phase with the left with the right hand side one here, and the left hand side one there is in phase with the left hand side one there. And that's the normal case in most most transformers. So we'll actually just prove that by going left to right now between the two transformers. So I'm doing the same thing again. It's left to right except for I'm doing it the left hand side of this transformer and the right hand side of that transformer. And they should, if I got a good enough connection. There we go. Be again out of phase completely, which is good for your um your voltage potential. So if I just close up the safe block, okay. Output on, take the voltage up, and you'll see there that you've got your potential difference again. So they're completely opposite phases. So that's what you want. You want your potential difference for your voltage either side of your Jacobs letter. So that's right. So I'll just prove to you now what the in phase looks like. I'll just turn it off, open it up. Right, so if I go to the right hand side of this transformer to the right hand side of this transformer, like, hold on a second, take that off there. Try and get a decent connection on the end of there, there we go. All right, so now we're going both right hand sides at the same time. So these will be in phase and you'll see both lines should go into the um, into the positive phase at the same time, so they will be in phase with each other. So we will know that this is what we might call the the live side. It doesn't really matter too much because it's center tap, but we could call this the live side now, both at the same time, in phase. Just close the safe block. Okay, so turn it on, and there you go. So as you can see, as that rises up to about two hundred volts. On the input, so there we go. So they're completely in phase. So we know that these both right hand side connections on the transformer here will connect together on the right hand side of the Jacobs ladder, and you could call that the live side if you want. It's side one, it's HT plus if you want to call it that, or whatever you want to call it, but they're both the same potential basically. So if you connect them together, you won't get an arc between the two of them because they're practically the same voltage. Okay, so if I just turn that down again. Switch them off. And then, respective, I'll just demonstrate this. It's probably not too much point demonstrating this, but I'll do the left hand side, both in phase at the same time, just to demonstrate that. So we've got the left hand side there, we'll be in phase with the left hand side here. So if I just power that up, I'll just demonstrate that that will be the, the opposite there. As you can see, I think that transformer, that might be where the actual, um, by the look of it, where the harmonics are coming from, so that, oh, there you go, not quite, it's probably because the one's connected to the, uh, that one transformer looks like it's got a connection issue, possibly, I can hear it just there, right, that'll be why, just let me sort that out a second, demonstrations don't always go right, so we'll just, uh, 
get that as a good connection first. So there we go, that's a good connection now. Right, so I'll close it up. Try again. There you go. That's better. That's about 200 volts there. And as you can see, that's going into the negative side first. So that's the opposite to the right hand side. So both of those left hand side connections there are in phase with each other. So if you touch them together, you won't get an arc between them hardly because they are practically the same voltage. So that just proves now that opposites. So if I now take these two probes off and connect these transformers left hand sides to left hand sides and right hand sides to right hand sides in parallel, then we'll get a good 40 milliamp Jacobs ladder at 10 kV, not a 400 milliamp at 0 kV. <laughs> I'll just try and get that to sit on there nice and straight. There we go. So in most case scenarios, like 9 out of 10 times, that'll be right. It's just that I happen to have an opposite one here, and this is why it's handy to check, and also having the oscilloscope helps a lot to be able to check this. So just to be sure, I'll connect the probes back on, measuring both transformers. So we will see the voltage do the same thing as earlier. We'll see the, uh, the eye or the fish, because we know that these are opposite phases between the two sides here so we've got your, your neutral there and your live there if you want to call it or your positive and your negative basically completely opposite potentials to get your 10 kv between at 40 milliamps so if i just close the safe block and demonstrate that output on take her up so let's get it up to 200 volts again just so it doesn't quite arc and there you go. So now we've got completely opposite phasing. We know we've got 15 kV if it was 220 on the input between the two peaks there. So we know that this is just about ready to fire because there's probably about, I don't know, about 9 kV in between that at the moment. It just needs a little bit more just to bridge the gap. So I'll bridge the gap now. We'll take it up to 220. 220. And there you go. You've got a nice arc making it all the way to the top. And as you can see on your oscilloscope, because it's nearly a short circuit, that there, oops, needs a bit more heat. Because it's nearly a short circuit, it is on your oscilloscope basically just there, uh, cancel each other out because you can see the short circuit and all the harmonics related to the, uh, the, arc, the, the arc between it there. So, there you go, guys. That's how you basically connect two transformers together in parallel and uh, measuring your phasing to make sure that they're correct. Because obviously, you want the two transformers to be in phase with each other but have the potential difference between your load which is what we want so yeah, there you go 40 milliamp jacobs ladder on 10 kv out of 220 milliamp obit transformers so uh i'll just turn that off guys all the way down output off open the safe block safety first and uh that's it basically guys that's how you connect two obit transformers together or any type of transformer in actual fact as long as you measure phasing it's practically the same and get your maximum combined ampage without losing your voltage by uh, accidentally connecting one back to front because i could put all three of these together and because the one is out of phase it would actually drop down the other two and you get like i don't know three kv i think with those two if that's a 10 that's a 10 and that's a 10, but that one's opposite. I think you get not very much on an output and just drag it down. I don't think you get anything really. It'd just make a horrible no noise. So yeah, so watch out for that guys. Some identical transformers are even opposite phasing. So that's just a good example of real life scenarios and uh, how to go about measuring them to get over them. But most transformers, you can just hook them up back to front and you just don't get anything other than a lot of humming, you know straight away. And that's probably going to be a problem. MOTs, I could see those smoking straight away, but <laughs> yeah, those things are just pieces of shit anyway. And they, they just got a, a stupid in amount of um, amps and they're just generally dangerous. So yeah, obits are pretty cool though, because they'll hurt an awful lot. 20 milliamps, 40 milliamps at 10 kV, ow. But it, you're like, less likely to actually die from them like you would from a, uh, an MOT, because MOTs don't usually give people second chances. But 
in the right circumstances, neither with these, but that's why you've got safety. You know, you've got switches, we've got actual open, completely open contacts. So, yeah. Hope you guys all enjoyed anyway, and uh, I'll see you all again soon. And uh, cheers.